Good night. Au revoir. Good night. Something in your window attracted my attention. A silk hanging, it bears the design of a tiger. That's not for sale. We are not open for business tonight. But perhaps I may sell you something. Observe this end woven rug. Excellent bargain. I don't need anything. Get out. <laughs> I have other treasures to show you. Treasures are not sold by street peddlers. Perhaps not. They have the proper setting. Might this be of interest? I tell you, I don't want to buy anything. I'm overstocked. But you haven't seen Kwan in secret. Stone from the Romanov collection. Newly arrived. Is it not worth your attention? We shall see. How much are you asking? Oh, it is easily worth 20,000, but you may have it for... Five. I'll give you two. Oh, no, 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 no. I must refuse your offer. The gem is worth ten times that much. Oh, how clumsy of me. I dropped the head of Kwan Yin. Is it not a perfect stone? Mm, fair. fair. I can offer four. That's my limit. Very well. I am a poor peddler. I take it. Your door's unlocked, just so I'd tell you. Oh, so it's you again. Is he trying to sell you anything? Only a rug. I told him not to bother me. My shop is closed. Didn't I warn you? I'm getting sick and tired of you guys without a license. Now, this time I'm going to turn you in. Now, come on. <laughs>
Hello, please. Reaching slab. Hello, at what time tonight does your ship, the Marco Polo, sail for the Orient? At midnight, also? I would like to reserve a stateroom. Alone, please, yes. The name is Moto. M-O-T-O. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Stateroom, sir, and the best of the lot it is, if I may say so. You might say so, Jeeves. Come on, what's your name? Begging your pardon, sir. Quiet! Somebody's waiting for you in there. Oh, you don't say it, you free. It's your father, sir. Oh. Are you by any chance the same Hitchings that owns this line? That's right, his old man is a Hitchings post line. Let's serenade. Uh, it won't be necessary. Oh, hello, Dad. I didn't think you were going to see me off. Bob, if your friends will excuse you. I'd like to see you for a minute before you sail. Oh, sure. Wait here, people. Don't go away. Come on, let's take it. Captain Marshall of this ship called me tonight to discuss a matter of considerable importance. It must have been considerable to keep you up this late. Say, you seem to have been given quite a send-off. You'd better sit down. I want you to concentrate. Thanks. I'm sorry, sir. That's all right, son. Just don't make a habit of it. Yes, sir. Huh? I mean, no, sir. You know, I'm counting on you to put some new life into the export business. Aren't you afraid to trust me after the way I flopped here? Not a bit. You're a hitchings. You're bound to make good if you try. All you need is a complete change of atmosphere. New surroundings. New, uh, companions. Yes, sir. I've, uh, I've written a letter to Wilkie, our branch manager in Shanghai. I want you to give it to him personally. It's very important and extremely confidential. I wouldn't leave it around in my stateroom. You can't tell who your fellow passengers may be. You'll like Wilkie. He's been representing us in the Far East for years. You put yourself under his wing and you'll be all right. Well, goodbye, son. Let me hear from you once in a while. I will. So long, Dad. Don't worry about me. I never did. Good luck. See that he sails without falling overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, my father. Come on in with that champagne. Come on, Jack. Yes, Wait, sir. Your stateroom, sir. And the best of the lot it is, if I may say so. I'm Carson, your room steward, sir. Anything you want, just ring. Thank you. <laughs> you see, very happy, my neighbors, don't they? It's Mr. Hitchings. His father owns the line. Oh. Hey, steward, bring some wine glasses. Excuse me. You understand, sir? His father and all that? Oh, yes, yes. Bob, can't you fix it for us all to go along? Yeah, oh, I wish I could, but I've given strict instructions to the chief steward to surround my cabin with pretty girls. <laughs> and look what I get. Hey, get who lives next door. Bob, <laughs> Excuse me, please. I think you've made a mistake. Come on, be a sport. I won't talk to the whole ship, maybe. But, uh, I don't know you. Well, that's all right. We're broad-minded. We don't mind a bit. Please, this is most embarrassing. Oh, you so don't want to meet us, eh? Giving us that Oh, lay off you, Bob. Excuse them, will you? They're really good company when they're sober. Come on, have a drink with us. Another time, please. Ah, but this is very special champagne. Good night. Oh, no, oh I thought he was high hat. Come on, just one. It isn't every night I sail for China. I'm afraid you'll have to hurry, sir. The ship's due to sail any moment now. Well, there she is. Do the ladies. Let's hope there's some attractive ones on board. If there are, you'll find a Bobby. Oh, what are you so noisy about? Come on. Oh, I'm thinking about the proverb of my country. Half the world spends its time laughing at the other half. And both are fools. Oh, not bad at all. You can't tell anything by appearances, can you? Shake. I choose my friends. Please. Oh, come on. I said shake. It's an old American custom. <laughs> oh! Hey, wait a minute. You can't do... Oh! That's an old Japanese custom. Bob, do that to me. <laughs> you would. Well, served us right. We asked for it. Now we're friends. Oh, my name is Hitchings. Bob, to you. So pleased. I'm Mr. Moto. 
Folks, this is Mr. Moto. Mr. Moto, this is Folks. I'm sorry you're not a dazzling blonde. I remember once on a trip through the canal. Your guest was asleep, sir. The ship's ready to sail. Oh, Hurry. Good well, Come on, please. Hold on, it's your time. Come on, everybody. 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 Come on, ever
Now, what do I do with it? <coughs> That's all. Just stir it. Gently, if you please. You wouldn't like a lily in it, would you? Won't be necessary. No. Drink it, Mr. Bob. Do I have to? It will improve the appearance of the world, I assure you. Drink it, please. I'm gonna live. That's great stuff, Mr. Moto. Oh, so I'm glad. And what will you have, sir? A glass of milk for me, please. Milk. <laughs> You're a funny fellow, Mr. Moto. Please, what do you find funny about me? Well, last night you were a jiu-jitsu expert. Yes. And now today you're old Doc Moto, prescriber of the world's greatest hangover cure. Who are you, anyway? I'm Mr. Moto, importer of oriental goods, with a hobby for magic. Is that all? Observe. <laughs> Say, that's swell. What else can you do? Do you want me to begin at the beginning? <laughs> I wish you would. Too long. When there's a beginning, there's an end. Let's end at the beginning. Alpha, Omega. Alpha, Omega? In the words of Socrates, let each man help his brother man. <laughs> Stanford 34. Stanford 21, unremember. <laughs> what do you know about that? Moto 21, let's see. Oh, I remember reading about you. You broke a pole vault record, didn't you? Now I would only break the pole. <laughs> that calls for a real drink. Hey, bartender, what do you suggest? Oh, um, a Panther's Kiss. What's in it? Oh, Kunahal. That's what you'll drink in Honolulu. Looks like it's going to be a dull crossing. Not a good-looking single girl on the ship, and no sign of a female under 40 getting on board here. Beautiful girl is only confusing to a man. I could do with a little confusion. Life has been entirely too tame these last five days. Just look at our new ship, please. Yes, sir, we ought to be able to make a nice hook rug by the time we reach Yokohama. Observe. I take it all back. I'll give her four stars right now. Aloha, New York. Glad you got aboard. I've been waiting for you. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Oh, no, no, not yet. You're not supposed to toss that over until we pass. Well, how do you like that? Very much. A beautiful girl knows how to say no in a few words. <laughs> yes? I didn't order that, Stuart. No, miss. The young gentleman in the next stateroom sent it to you with his compliments. I don't know the young gentleman. May I wine you? P.S. I'd like to dine you. Robert Hitchings, Jr. Shall I open it now, miss? No, you may take it back. He seems quite a nice chap. His father owns the line. Take it back. And tell Mr. Hitchings, Jr., whose father owns the line, that I'm not in the habit of accepting gifts from strangers. Yes, miss. She sent it back? Yes, sir. Well, didn't she give you any message? Well, the lady said, begging your pardon, sir, that she don't accept gifts from strangers. And I thought formalities were forgotten at sea. When modern people cling to conventions, there's nearly always a purpose. Well, I suggest we cling to the bottle. Carson, fix three glasses. Yes, sir. I played very badly. Excuse me, please. 
Four sixes. Oh. To Miss Mystery. May we become better acquainted. Well. I think your sight's a little off. Doing very nicely, thank you. Do <laughs> <laughs> you realize you haven't told me anything about yourself? Our lives seem so different out here. It doesn't matter who we are ashore. Oh, I wish I could go on forever like this and never land anywhere. That's easy. I'll bribe the captain to cast us adrift on a raft. Oh, no. I mean, serious. This week at sea has given me something I thought I'd never know again. I feel like a child on my way to school. Pretty dingy and unpleasant school. Let's play hooky, then. That wouldn't be very helpful to either of us. After all, you have your business to attend to in Shanghai. Is Shanghai your destination or just a stopover? Uh, I have an uncle there. I'm on my way to visit him. You better make it a long visit because we're going to see a lot of each other. Are we? You don't think I'm going to lock myself up in an office all the time, do you? Perhaps you should for the good of the hitching blind. Since I met you, I've had an awful time thinking of anything else. What did you think about before, then? I can't remember. I, I must have thought of something. Anyhow, it doesn't make much difference now, does it? It's late. You'd better see me to my cabin, Bob. As you say. Enjoying the moonlight on the water, Mr. Carson. Very soothing to the nerves. Mm -hmm. Good I'll take two. Well, I'll bet the voice, Mr. Marloff. Well, I will call you. Well, there's three janks and a couple of dames. <laughs> Just a moment. Three dames and a couple of jacks. That beats you. Hey, that makes five queens in the deck. You see? You were trying to cheat. Oh, boss, you know I wouldn't do that to you. Enough. That's all right. But don't let it happen again, Marx. I haven't drawn a full week's salary since I've been working for you. What's that? He catch message. Let him in. Sheila, wait upside. It's from the Marco Polo. The little lady? What'd she say? Read yourself. Cousin William completely recovered from illness. Don't worry any further. Love, Gloria. Hey, that don't make any sense. What does she mean? She means met young Hitchings as ordered. He is harmless. Uh, that's what I thought she said. We'll you'll soon find out if he's harmless or very smart. The ship is due to arrive Friday. Meet her in the launch as usual. Okay, boss. I still can't figure it out. What? How those five queens got in the deck? 
and the five jacks. To you. To our last night. No, to our last night at sea. Tomorrow we'll be in China. Excuse me, please, but we are already in China. Hello, Mr. Moto. Hello. The Yangtze River is extremely wide where it meets the sea. Let's finish our drinks and go on deck. I know a swell place up forward. Won't you join us, Mr. Moto? Oh, no, thank you. Young love is very tiresome for a third party. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I dislike to be strenuous, Mr. Carson. Well, what's he jump at me for? Like a blooming gorilla. The letter, Mr. Carson. What letter? What letter are you talking about? I'm just cleaning up this cabin. The letter. Get away. Get away, I tell you. You touch me, and I'll cut your heart out. You think you're clever, eh? But I know who you are, Mr. Moto. That is most unfortunate for you. An importer, eh? Well, you never fool me. I know, dear. I know, dear, the night you came aboard. I know you too. Perhaps you remember Curious Shop in San Francisco? How did you? I wasn't there, I tell you. You killed a man there. I didn't, no. And stuffed his body in a wicker basket, Mr. Carson. I didn't go to kill him. He was hiding in back of the store. So you were only kidding when you said this was our last night, weren't you? No. I'll not see you in Shanghai. But you'll have to. Where does your uncle live? I can't tell you now. Oh, when am I going to find out? Tomorrow, perhaps, when we land. Whatever's worrying you can be fixed. Just let me in on it. I'll help you. You can't. Other people are involved. You're not married, are you? Oh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm sorry to be so mysterious, but I have no choice. Look, I don't want you to tell me anything that's none of my business. Only, anything you're involved in is my business. Please don't ask me anymore. But I'm in love with you. I know. Doesn't that make any difference? Makes all the difference. Well, then, the devil with all this secrecy. You and I are going to take this ship right back to the States. I want you to meet my family. <laughs> but you don't know anything about me. Who I am. Well, who or... cares? But you have your obligations in Shanghai. You told me you promised your father to make good. All right, I will. And if I do, will you marry me then? We'd better wait and see what happens. Oh, <laughs> boy, will I work. From now on, there'll be no more Playboy stuff. Nothing but business. And you. Soon be alongside, sir. Where's my regular steward? Haven't you heard? Carson's disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, sir. Didn't sleep in his bunk last night. Oh, so? That is too bad. An accident, perhaps. Well, that's what the skipper thinks, but I got my own idea. Yes? Carson probably jumped overboard. He was a bit cracked, sir. 
And I hadn't tipped him yet. That is very sad. Here, yeah. you might as well have it. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, where is the young lady? I should like to say goodbye. I don't know. I've looked everywhere and I can't find her. Oh, so? Her luggage is gone, too. Oh, stewardess, where's the young lady who occupies this cabin? The young lady was took off in a motor launch early this morning, sir. But she promised to give me her address this morning. I don't know where she's going. We never know what's going to happen in this life. Like Mr. Carson. Yesterday he was talking to me just like you are now. And... Well, I never. Can you tell me where I can find young Hitchings? There he is with a Japanese gentleman. Oh, thanks. Now, remember, if you ever come to Flatbush, don't forget to look us up. Thanks. Mr. Hitchings, I'm Joseph Wilkie. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Wilkie? Dad gave me a letter to deliver to you personally. Said it was very important. Oh, thanks. Well, this is Mr. Moto. So pleased. Mr. Wilkie is our branch manager. Oh, so? Shall we go ashore now? The company launch is waiting. Sure. Will you go with us, Mr. Moto? I'm so sorry. I must go back to my cabin. But we shall meet again. Well, certainly. Shanghai's a small world. I've made reservations for you at the Cathay Hotel. You'll find it very comfortable. Oh, fine. Don't forget to look me up, Mr. Moto. We shall see each other. Good day, Mr. Wilkie. So long, Mr. Bow. So long. Wong, take Mr. Hitchings' baggage dockside. Chop, chop. Who's the little Japanese gentleman? Oh, he's an importer. I met him on the ship. Nice chap. Many strange people come to Shanghai. You must be very careful. Oh, Moto's all right. We're fraternity brothers. Went to the same university. Oh, that's different. <laughs> hey, boy. You catch him my baggage. Chop suey. Good. You can't be in love with a girl you don't even know, but I am. From what you told me, I should say that this woman's in a desperate position and is therefore forced to use desperate means. That's not fair. You don't know anything about her. My boy, Shanghai's a melting pot of all sorts of people in distress. For instance, we've had a lot of trouble in the colony with these white Russian women. Well, many of them are very attractive, but being without country and therefore without passports, they often resort to extreme measures in order to leave China. All that has nothing to do with Gloria. You must remember you're not in the States now. Here, tradition and custom stand for something. Social circles are very prescribed. You can't disregard them. If everybody's so class conscious here, I don't think I'm going to like it. Of course you will, my boy. You'll find Shanghai very progressive. We have up-to-date nightclubs, a racetrack. I don't give a hang about that. I've got to find Gloria. But you're not a free agent anymore, my boy. After all, you owe something to the Hitchings family. There are plenty of girls of the proper class here. I'll see that you meet them. Oh, by George, I completely forgot about your father's letter. That's perfectly blank. Hmm? Is this a joke? Well, that's funny. Dad said it was very confidential. Excuse me. Hello? Speaking. Yes, I'll hold on. San Francisco calling. It must be Dad. Ready for San Francisco. Just a moment. Yes? Mr. Hitching Sr. calling his son. Also, thank you. I will listen in. All right, San Francisco. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, Dad. Swell. I can hear you just as clear. I said I can hear you very well. Yes, Mr. Wilkie's here with me now. Say, Dad, you know that letter you sent him? Well, there's nothing on it. It's blank. What? Then someone must have substituted it. That letter was to warn Wilkie to examine all shipments very carefully. Government agents are concentrating on the recent smuggling in San Francisco. We've had several instances of smuggled diamonds on our ships. Yesterday, customs guards discovered a large shipment of narcotics on one of our liners. There's no clue except that it came from China. Well, how was it concealed? In Oriental Curios? Well, maybe we can trace the shippers at this end. That's why I'm telephoning you. It looks like the work of a big ring dealing in a kind of contraband. The point is we are subject to a fine of $200,000.
200,000? Oh, I know it's the law, but... Now, about that letter. Evidently, the ring has men working on the Marco Polo. You must be very cautious, as you're probably being watched. All right, Dad, I'll be careful. We'll get on it right away. Want to talk to Mr. Wilkie? Hold on. Yes, Mr. Hitchings. I heard. Naturally. I understand. We'll start an investigation at once. Goodbye. I can't believe it. We've got to trace those shipments. I don't understand how it was done. We examine everything thoroughly before it goes aboard. Unless it was loaded at Tinsin. Tinsin? Do our ships take on cargo there, too? Yes, we've got a Chinese agent there, old Chang. I never quite trusted him. Then I think we'd better run up there and check on him. So do I. But I've got urgent business here. I must clear up first. You think I could handle it alone? Yes, I think you could. As a matter of fact, it would probably be better. Chang doesn't know you. Of course, it's not a pleasant prospect. You'll have to catch the one o'clock express, and that gives you barely time to pack up again. Oh, you mean today? Well, that's not such a good idea. You forget I'm looking for someone. But this smuggling business is more important than a shipboard romance. Oh, yes, you're right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a deal with you. I'll go to Tinsin to find out what this Chang knows. That's the stuff. Now, wait a minute. I'll go tomorrow. Meanwhile, you've got to take me all over Shanghai and give me a chance to find Gloria. Is it a deal? <laughs> you're on. I was young once myself. Cafe Hotel. One moment, please. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? I'm a stranger here. Could you direct me, please, to a store where I might have some films developed? There's a camera shop up Nankin Road. I'll write you the address. Oh, you're very kind. And may I compliment the hotel on its excellent telephone service? Thank you very much. Perhaps you will condescend to have dinner tonight with a lonely Japanese gentleman. <laughs> I might. I'm off duty at six. Thank you. I will call for you. Good afternoon. Perhaps? I'm looking for a small figure, purely decorative. A very fine jade Buddha. And dynasty bronze. May I see that one? Yeah. No, this one. Ah, Huan Yan. Very beautiful. Chinese, goddess of mercy. Hmm. A kindly lady. Is she expensive? No, $20 makes. She's rather dear, isn't she? How much will you pay? I'm not anxious to buy. I prefer one with a proper setting. The proper setting has been changed. Oh, so? You did not know this? I've been away. By what happy chance did you visit my shop? I noticed the sign of the tiger. You are very well informed. Do you wish something else? No, thank you. My business is with your worthy superior. Good day. Good day. Yes? Adam speaking. A Japanese? No, I don't know him. Yes, I suspected that. So I've taken the liberty of having the gentleman followed. He understands more than is beneficial. All right, but don't telephone here again. Wires can be tapped. Report on this to me personally. Is everything else taken care of? Yes. 
The boat will be ready tonight. I will meet you at the usual place. Happy to see you again, Mr. Moto. Thank you, Chief. Wait outside. I don't wish to be disturbed. Your visit to Shanghai is a pleasant surprise. Things are very quiet here. Have you an interesting case? Rather. May I offer you my humble assistance? I shall be very grateful. First, might I be permitted to inspect your files? I'm looking for information on this charming lady. Mr. Wilkie. Yes? Did you see anyone in the corridor just now? No, my boy. Why? Come inside. Somebody just slipped this under my door. It's about Gloria. I wonder who sent it. Well, we've been inquiring about her all day. It might be any one of a hundred. This is very strange. The International Club. Do you know where that is? I've never been there. It's one of those cafes down by the waterfront. Patronized by people looking for a thrill. Sounds very interesting. I wouldn't be seen in that section in daylight, let alone after dark. Then I'll just have to see it without you. But you're not thinking of actually going there. Oh, yes, of course. My dear boy, your father would never forgive me if I permitted you to go alone. We're going to find Gloria tonight. Hey, come, Shaw. Hey, 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 International Club, savvy? International Club, me savvy. This isn't the right direction. Oh, so? Stop, please. Stop, go back. Tingla. I'm afraid you lost your way. You only a slap, Miss Sam. Gee, I thought sure we were going to kill somebody. Mr. Moto is a very difficult fellow to kill. <laughs> Excuse me, please, Miss Liu. May I present Mr. Bao? How do you do? Oh, yeah. Can we drop you anywhere? Don't go out of your way, please. Well, where are you going? International Club. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So are we. Get in and join us. Chop, chop, and drive much be careful. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, hi, uh, hi, uh. I don't think we'll be long. All right, sir. Perhaps they won't admit us. Sure they will. What is it? May we come in? Who are you? American tourists. Plenty cash. It's all right, Ivan. They're friends of mine. Good evening. Americans, huh? Are you a tourist, too? Yes, please. We're all in the same party. A table for four, please. 
Oh, by the way, do you have an entertainer here named Gloria Danton? Well, we got an entertainer here. She's doing an encore now. Follow me. There's always something brewing, so beware, hey, hey. I'm such a shy violet, still that twinkle in my eye makes you think I'm a butterfly, and so with each bow I have met, oh, fear I may create the wrong impression. Do I use tact, diplomacy, and much discretion? I have everyone stunned while parading the fun. I'm the center of things. I appeal to them all, both the great and the small, from bakers to kings. Oh, la, 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 and when you say I'm a gay Uncle Kit, I reply I'm a shy violin. She looks just like an angel, an angel from above. Is this really the girl you were telling me about? Excuse me, where are you going? I'm going to see Gloria. Hey, buddy, what do you want? I'm looking for the singer's dressing room. Yeah? What do you want to see her about? She's a friend of mine. So, what's your name? Robert Hitchings. I'll see if she wants to see you. Yes? There's a fellow by the name of Hitchens wants to see you. Please show him in. He says to go in. Well, I found you after all. You've got to leave this place right away. <laughs> After the trouble I've had? Oh, oh, no. I mean it. It's dangerous for you to be here. Will you explain why, please? What is it? It's me, Chief. Dang, unlock it. Young Hitchings is in Tanya's dressing room, and she told him the to lamp. How long has he been in the club? Just a few minutes, come in with some other people. There was a Japanese guy with him. Why didn't you tell me that before? Well, I didn't have a chance. I was watching them. You finish this. Have it ready to load on the launch in half an hour. Come on, Boris. No, I won't go until you tell me what you're doing in a place like this. All right, I'll tell you if you'll promise to go. My real name is Tanya Boris. I'm a white Russian. We lived in Harbin until a year ago. My father was killed mysteriously, and I escaped to Shanghai. You had friends here, someone you knew? Oh, Nimalov, the owner of the place. He's also from Harbin. He was kind to me, hired me as an entertainer here, even though I knew nothing of that kind of work. Well, what were you doing in Honolulu, and why'd you use that phony name? I was traveling on a forged passport that Marlov secured for me. He... he sent me to find out why you were going to Shanghai. What? But why? I'm afraid you have already told your friend, Mr. Hitchings, more than he should know. Who are you? I am Marlow. May I ask you if there are Japanese gentlemen in your party tonight? Friend of mine, any objections? I'm not certain yet. But you, unfortunately, will have to be detained. For what? In order that I may learn what happened to a certain employee of mine. What are you talking about? Do you remember a steward named Carson? Yes. Certainly. Carson was on the Marco Polo to keep an eye on you, Tanya. To spy on me? Last night, he sent a message saying you had fallen in love with this young man. He was then to search your stateroom for some information I was anxious to obtain. Oh, my father's letter to Wilkie. I'm beginning to understand now. However, Carson was not aboard the Marco Polo when the ship arrived this morning. The reports are he disappeared sometime during the night. You killed Carson when you found him in your room? I did not. I didn't even know he was there. I want to talk to you, Tanya. Oh, leave her alone. She hasn't told me anything. I wish I could believe you. Show Mr. Hitchings our fan-tan room. Hey, 
That was very foolish of you. Oh, no. Take them both downstairs. I'll be right down. 124, 125. It's wonderful, Mr. Moto. I don't see how you keep from spoiling it. Patience, my dear Miss Liu, is the most useful of virtues. Well, good evening, Mr. Wilkie. I beg your pardon. Oh, excuse me, sir. I forgot you don't know me. I've seen you around the city so many times, Mr. Wilkie. Permit me, I'm Marlowe. You're the proprietor here. At your service. Miss Liu, may I present Mr. Marlowe? And I'm Mr. Moto, Mr. Marlowe. I'm delighted to welcome you to the International Club. I'm honored, sir. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. We're waiting for my guest to return. Mr. Robert Hitchings, the son of our president. He went out to speak to your singer. Met her on the ship. Oh, yes. It is the young man I saw going into her dressing room then. I wish he'd come back. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to make your evening more pleasant. I've heard of uh, gambling. I think he can supply almost any game. Would you like to come along, Mr. Wilkie? I never indulge in games of chance. You should try it, Mr. Wilkie. I find it very exhilarating. No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what is that you wrote, Mr. Moto? Oh, this? <laughs> An ancient Japanese poem called Haik. Must be exactly 17 syllables. Very difficult. Furui keni kawazu. Tobikomu mizu no oto. Very nice sentiment. You won't mind if I desert you for a short time? No, no, indeed. Perhaps you might persuade Miss Liu to dance. Shall we go, Mr. Ma? himself against inquisitive visitors. The chief's coming. Here we are. A little quiet tonight, isn't it? It's too early for the play to start yet. Oh, so? And what game do you favor, Mr. Moto? Fan-fan, roulette, faro, dice, well, those are games for people who play at gambling. I'm sure we can oblige you, Mr. Modo. I prefer action when I gamble. I like the quick turn of a card. We can cut for high cards if you like. Excellent. Max, take up cards. Oh. What's the matter? My dress. Just look. I'll have to go somewhere and fix it. I'm sorry. I'll hurry back. Will you cut first? After you, sir. The king. Let it try it. With pleasure. Your turn. After you. Pardon me, please. I could have sworn you had a jack of spades. That's a king, all right. That is strange. What? 
Well, I'm very much interested in that tiger symbol over there on the wall. Yes? I'm familiar with a similar one. Hmm? San Francisco. San Francisco? In a certain curious shop just off Grand Avenue in Chinatown. Will you cut? No, 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 no. Alors voilà comment ça s'est passé. J'ai dit une petite seconde. Je suis tout. Allez, ils ont pris. Et alors, j'ai dit, alors, j'ai dit. I never had such luck. There's a saying that ill fortune at gambling is often a sign of success in other fields. What other fields? Oh, business perhaps. Certainly your establishment appears prosperous. On the other hand, it is possible that business alone is not enough. If one had uh, a sideline. Would you mind explaining that? Is it well to speak confidentially before so many? All right. The boys, wait outside. Mux will call you. Okay, boss. The police department, quickly. Shanghai police. The chief? Hello? I'm calling for Mr. Moto. We're at the International Club. Hello? Hello? Two squad car, hurry to the International Club. Notify the River Division also. You see, Mr. Marlow, I have access to certain merchandise upon which we could both profit. Well, I'm interested in profits. Precisely. But mutual trust is the basis of a successful partnership. Partnership? Uh-huh. And on what basis? Oh, <laughs> equality. Equality? And this merchandise you speak of? The same in which you already deal. Yes? And uh, other merchandise also. I see. And how am I to be certain that you are what you pretend to be? My dear sir, <laughs> I know what happens to one who tries to deceive you. I remember the gentleman in the curio shop in San Francisco, the gentleman in the wicker crate. Am I a fool to take such a risk unless... Uh, unless what? Unless I am what I claim to be. Shall we trust each other, Mr. Marlow? What is your connection with young Hitchings? I, too, was following him to discover why he was on his way to Shanghai. The United States government is beginning to be too much interested in smuggling. We are both in the same business, Mr. Marlow. Shall we not combine forces for our own protection and profit? I think we shall get along together, Mr. Moto. <laughs> I was sure you were a good judge of character, Mr. Marlow. What about young Mr. Hitchings and uh, the girl? Max, show Mr. Moto our vault. <laughs> and what do you propose to do with them? The young woman will go with me. The gentleman has hurt too much. We have a cure for him, the river. I think you're wrong. Wrong why? My dear Marlow, I agree with you. There's but one penalty for treachery. Slit her throat and be done with it. But the young man, after all, he's the son of the owner of the hitching line. A millionaire. He may be worth a lot of money to us. Alive. What do you want? Can you direct me to the gambling room? Very sorry. Gamble room closed for tonight. Closed? We have a shipment already on board our launch. Perhaps you would like to go with us to deliver it to the Marco Polo. Excellent. And we can dispose of the young lady on the way. Max, open the door. Oh, Mr. Welkin. Where's young Hitchings? What does this mean? I demand that you release him at once. And if we do not? Get away from him, Ricky. So that's what you are. He's a crook. He's in with Marlow. 
I think, gentlemen, all this excitement is hardly necessary. Untie me, I'll handle him. Yes, I've got to get you out of here as soon as possible. Marov Sahib, I'm late because I... Sahib. That man! That man is police spy! That Japanese! He is the one who shot me! He is the man I had followed to police station! Stand perfectly still! Please to come over here. But Mr. Mo. Now think first, Mr. Moto. So you are a police spy, eh? Don't excite yourself, Mr. Marlow. You won't do any more spying. Well, then let's have it over with at once. Often I have won. I can also lose. Adran, you and Mux take those people to the boat. We have to leave at once. And now, Mr. Moto. If you please. Here. Get up, Mr. Marloff. Mr. Wilkie. May I request you to secure his gun? You'll find it inside his coat. It went off. I took hold of the gun and it shot him. Also, that would seem to dispose of Mr. Marlow. Hello, Chief. Mr. Moto, what's happened? We got your telephone message. Mr. Marlow was shot accidentally by Mr. Wilkie. I'm sorry, Mr. Moto. You had me fooled, but you saved our lives, old man. Your apology is accepted, Mr. Ball. I must apologize too, Mr. Moto. I didn't know. Let me congratulate you. What is all this? Mr. Moto, well, who are you anyway? I think this will explain. You recognize the company? Well, then you are... I have the honor to be the managing director. You've heard of us? Of course, you're our best customer, but I don't understand. I was forced to take matters into my own hands. My business, as well as yours, was being seriously jeopardized by the smuggling activities of Mr. Marlow and uh, his friends. Well, then you're not a detective after all. Oh, only as a hobby. <laughs> but what's all this got to do with me? I demand that Mr. you explain. Mr. Wilkie! You are not in a position to demand. It was not an accident that Mr. Wilkie shot Mr. Marlow. What? No. I first suspected that some person in a responsible position had something to do with the smuggling when I read this letter. Mr. Hitchings gave his son to deliver to you, Mr. Wilkie. And here it is. And when Mr. Marlow made the unfortunate error of recognizing you upstairs, I began to think I might be correct. And when you found this room and knew the correct code signal to gain admission, I was practically certain. But I wanted even stronger proof. So I decided to give you an opportunity to kill the only man who knew that you were the head of this ring of smugglers. Mr. Moto, your young lady will be all right. Miss Liu, what happened to her? Someone shot her while she was telephoning us. Oh, so? Then I suggest that you see if there's not a gun with one cartridge fired in Mr. Wilkie's pocket. Silence, sir. You're right. Take him away. You don't take care of the river. Not my The river police caught the rest of the gang. Thank you, Chief. Well, Mr. Moto, I thought you were shot. Yes, aren't you hurt? Oh, yes. <laughs> but fortunately, I was wearing my new style waistcoat. Quite uncomfortable, but very effective for such occasions. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, now I know you're the one that put that note under my door. You wanted Wilkie to come here. Alpha Omega, Mr. Bob. Alpha Omega, Mr. Moto. Alpha Omega? Mm -hmm. 